In this lecture, we are going to learn about three-dimensional arrays and pointers. So, like previously, so three-dimensional array also has a lot of relation with pointers. The thing is, you store a three-dimensional array you define let us take one example a322 okay so it's a three-dimensional array and we have defined it here but the multi-dimensional array usually, usually they follow a recursive procedure so a322 so it's basically this three-dimensional array is nothing but three so this three two-dimensional array of size 2 cross 2. So this is nothing but 3 2 dimensional arrays okay of size 2 cross 2. So this is the first A0, A1 and A2. Now inside that you have A0 and then the all the four elements. So this is the two dimensional array. Now in this one also the recursive procedure goes on and a if you say let's say b22 so it's nothing but two two dimensional array so it's b0 and b1 are nothing but they are two single dimensional arrays so this will be this is a single dimensional array this whole thing similarly this is another single dimensional array so this is a0 0 and this is a01 now this a1 is another two dimensional array a2 is another two dimensional array here also this one is a10 and this single dimensional array is a11 now this is again this two dimensional array a2 is again two single dimensional array so a20 and a Two, one. So this is how it works. It's all recursion. So uh, a three-dimensional array, okay, a three two two is basically three two-dimensional arrays and so on. Okay, so that you have to remember. And another important thing is multi-dimensional array. You can have n-dimensional array, but you need to store them on a linear memory locations. Okay, so what will happen is now we have so a 0 0 0 and I will go till a so it's three dimensional array so three was there a 2 1 and okay so 1 1 so this is there so what we have to do is that let's see so we have a 3 2 cross 2 so basically we need to make three two dimensional array of size two cross two and this two dimensional array b22 is nothing but two single dimensional array so first we try for a0 is our first three dimensional array okay so a0 is the two dimensional array then a1 is there a2 is there these are the three two dimensional array this consists of a0 0 and a01 so what we will do we will open like this and a00 is a single dimensional array so this is a00 one single dimensional array then the next single dimension array is a01 okay so this is done so then our coming back to a0 which was a two dimensional array okay so a0 is done so now we come to basically so a0 consists of so we have in fact let's see so a0 0 consists of the first single dimensional array then a0 1 okay and then we will have this is there okay so now what will happen a01 is done then we come to a 
1 so this is a 1 0 so this is their a 1 0 and then we have a 1 1 so this is the next single dimensional array so using this now what we have done is so we have and this whole thing is what so now let's try to see this this is the two dimensional array okay so this is a0 and if you see this one so it's a of 1 so now we are complete with a0 and a1 then we need to do is a2 so a2 will be again it consists of two dimensional array okay so we have a2 will be a2 0 so this one is a2 0 and a2 1 so this is this so like this we expand so now you must be able to little bit understand and in fact that how we have to linearly expand the nth dimensional array so three dimensional array first we know that okay a3 2 2 so this is i know that okay this is a, a three two dimensional arrays are there okay so we have three 2d array of size 2 cross 2 okay and now 2d array is again of size 2 cross 2 is again 2 1d array of size 2 so this way you need to expand okay and you need to expand and make it linear now the thing is if i want to access the elements okay so we have all the elements here so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so these are the arrays that we have stored okay this is how it is stored and now let's try to see in fact i tried it out on my computer okay and got these addresses okay so these are hexadecimal addresses a 0 0 1 2 3 4 so these are all how it goes a 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 so these are the i have a 3 2 2 okay and i'm accessing all those elements so this is the third two dimensional array and this is the second two dimensional array and this is the a0 is the first two dimensional array okay and a0 is basically the two dimensional array okay which starts at 402004 and each integer is of four bytes so it is taking difference of four so first what happens the first two dimensional array is stored here okay uh, so let's see till here and then our next 2d array starts and finally our last 2d array starts so this is done now inside that again if you see so this is again a two cross two two dimensional array okay so which is again what is it it's a two single dimensional array of size two so this is so a of 1 0 a two uh, basically this is a single dimensional array and this again a of 1 1 is a single dimensional array of size 2 so this way it goes now let's try to see how we can write it in terms of pointers so how to write a i j k okay so a is of course here a pointer to a three dimensional array pointer to a 3d array so of course a plus i let's now try to analyze a few things what is a plus i so if we have a 3 2 2 so we have basically three two dimensional arrays so if a plus 2 will give us the third two dimensional array so pointer to the a plus i is then the ith two dimensional array now in the ith when i have got the memory location for the ith two dimensional array in that i want to access some rows okay 
I want to access rows of those two dimensional array. So what will I do? So a plus i is the ith two dimensional array. Inside that I go, now this is the memory location in the second two dimensional array. If I do this plus j, so I will go to the jth row of the, so something like this, this is the jth row of the two dimensional array. So basically this is the jth row of the ith two dimensional array okay so that is what is represented here pointed to the jth row of ith two dimensional array now let's see i am here okay i want to go to the kth column so what i need to do so this is a pointer to a what so this is a pointer to now a row single dimensional array okay so star a plus i plus j so this is now there this is basically going to the ith, jth row of the ith two dimensional array in that I now need to make add k okay so this one plus k so now what will happen I will go to the kth column or the kth element of the jth row of ith two dimensional array and if you need to find its value, you need to do star of this. So this is how you can do. This is one way. And let's try to see a few more things. Okay. So let's try out. So we have basically A of I is the memory location for the ith two dimensional array. Okay. A I J is the uh, basically the jth row in the ith two dimensional array okay so if you do plus k so this will give you the memory location of the kth element of the jth row of the ith two dimensional array and using this you can find the values so you can play with these things and in fact i would recommend you to do that so that you can get a feel of how three dimensional arrays and pointers work. Now the last thing if you need to pass okay a pointer pass a basically a three dimensional array to function. So you have to give int so int star 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 a then this is basically now you can pass the three dimensional array and then you can access it in the function. Okay so this was the idea about a three dimensional array so you have to basically think in terms of recursive like three dimensional if i do like this so a four five three four so this is what again you have to define this is now there are four three dimensional arrays okay and a i j k l here means that so four three dimensional arrays are there and inside that now you have to go again. So this also if you computer you make define some array like this basically multi dimensional array then computer will store again linearly using the recursive pattern that we discussed for the three dimensional okay. So only thing is now there will be like in this example there will be four three dimensional arrays. Now you for one dimensional array you again put that layout in the memory then again start with the second one third one and the fourth one so i hope you understand this thanks a lot